Ready for another rejuvenation video? Yeah! Yeah, that's the spirit. So yes, we are back and this week we're talking about this recent publication, Multi-Omic Rejuvenation of Naturally Aged Tissues by a Single Cycle of Transient Reprogramming. A couple of the authors are heading off to Altos Labs, which you may have heard about recently in more popular media. So I think many people are interested in this paper. <laughs> so we'll be talking about rejuvenation, again, cellular reprogramming, what it means by multi-omics, and because it's me, also a bit on senescent cells, which may or may not be surprising. So my speedy recap, rejuvenation. The current consensus is that it refers to reversal of aging and so differs from duroprotective strategies that instead slow down or attenuate the biological age process. Cellular reprogramming in this context involves the four Yamanaka factors, OSKM, that when expressed in differentiated cells can reverse them to pluripotent stem cells. Cells that have the potential to divide continuously but also to differentiate. So they were termed induced pluripotent stem cells. And this is where the reprogramming comes in as you alter a cell's identity. But this is where the journey of this video continues as depending on how long or how much you express these factors, you can prevent a differentiated cell from completely losing its identity. This could be beneficial as it may still have benefits in terms of rejuvenation, whilst greatly reducing the risk of cancer development, or worse, teratomas. So you may have heard this be described as partial reprogramming, but what is the evidence for it and how does it work? Well, in this case, it would appear that partial reprogramming is reversing aging without a cell losing its identity, so making it safer. And so far, this approach seems to work. A landmark paper came out in a publication in 2016, almost six years ago now, that showed short cycles of OSKM expression in mice, followed by recovery, resulted in rejuvenation in mice and prolonged lifespan in a mouse model of premature ageing. But the question is, what is changing in the cells during this process, and how is it working? The reason information like this is important is that you could define a safe stopping point epigenetically or transcriptionally. So this brings us on to the latest publication. And the first thing we should address is how are they actually causing this reprogramming, as I think this will be an important reflection point later. Well, they used the mouse strain that had previously been created where a transcriptional activator gene is placed in the Rosa 26 locus. And so this transcriptional activator is always made, but currently it's not active. And then also you have lentiviral induced integration of the Yamanaka factors that get activated by the transcriptional activator. And so you need to activate the activator to get expression of the Yamanaka factors. And you can do this by giving the mice the drug doxycycline. So to cut a long story short, when the mice get doxycycline, the Yamanaka factors are expressed. So in the study, they wanted to see what rejuvenation occurs after expressing the Yamanaka factors in 55 week old mice for one week of expression and to see what the molecular changes were. One of the caveats with this model is that the amount of expression differs in different tissue and cell types, and so some tissues get a stronger boost than others. One that gets higher expression is the pancreas, so that is where most of the paper focuses on. And so this is where they then did their multi-omic analyses. Omic approaches just refers to the fact that instead of looking at just one gene or one protein or one methylation site, you look at all or, well, very many of them. So if it were genes, it's referred to as the transcriptome. And looking at DNA methylation sites, it's known as the methylome. And so multi-omic simply refers to the fact that they did lots of data collection to profile different aspects. So they started with the DNA methylome since the presence and absence of methylation marks have been shown to correlate with age, so-called epigenetic clocks. And they did this in the pancreas of the reprogrammed mice, as well as age match controls and young mice. Perhaps unsurprisingly, given previous studies, they saw a profile that fell between old and young mice. But what was interesting was that they also looked at the methylome straight after the one week of Yamanaka expression, and two weeks later as well, after a recovery period. And it seems that the gain of methylation was faster than the loss of methylation marks, suggesting that the recovery period is important for demethylation. So anyway, they saw partial methylome reprogramming in the pancreas. 
The next omics they looked at was the transcriptome. In some ways, this can be more informative because we can see which specific genes are expressed, and as genes have been characterised more with a function, they're better understood. And so anyway, they saw a similar partial rejuvenation of the transcriptome of the old mice, and in particular, they saw a reduction in mTOR signalling and increase in DNA repair pathways and collagen signalling in the pancreas. Then the last aspect was the metabolome of the blood serum. They identified 23 metabolites that changed with age, but only four of these metabolites changed following the reprogramming, as you can see here. It's interesting to point out that 4-hydroxyproline is a component of collagen, and thymine has been shown to extend lifespan in worms, but let us know about the other two metabolites. They also did take a look at some other tissues where there was weaker expression. One thing, unsurprisingly, that I found interesting was their analysis of senescent cells in the liver. Using their transcriptome data, they observed that markers of senescence increase even after the reprogramming of very old mice, suggesting that a single period of transient OSKM in vivo may not be sufficient to rejuvenate the transcriptome of senescent cells present in the aged liver. Well, that's just senescent cells for you. <laughs> but uh, joking aside, cellular senescence is thought to be a barrier to reprogramming, perhaps due to their chromatin structure. But also, interestingly, is the fact that there's some evidence that's a, that the secretory profile of senescent cells can drive reprogramming. So it would definitely be interesting to see a combination of both this partial reprogramming with the presence of senolytics. So all in all, this was more of a mechanistic paper than a functional one. But this is still important to do, as the authors comment, we hope this serves as the basis for future studies to dissect the mechanisms underlying OSKM-driven rejuvenation in vivo. Also, it may provide benchmarking to recapitulate OSKM-like rejuvenation with pharmacological or nutritional interventions. So the idea is that, if we know this amount of reprogramming is both effective and safe, let's use these measurements as a benchmark to compare other rejuvenative therapies. So with that, I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.